So one in 200 people will experience homelessness. The problem's true in Australia, it's true in the United Kingdom, it's true in the United States. It's even true in places you wouldn't normally associate with social problems because they're so darn nice, like Sweden and New Zealand. And we all wanna help, right? We walk past a homeless person on the street and our hearts fill with empathy or pity, maybe sadness, and we think, I wanna help. But sometimes we struggle to identify and we, we don't know what to do. So we flick them a coin or they'll buy a copy of the big issue and we leave the problem for someone else to solve. That was pretty much how I operated and, and how I thought for most of my life. But then one particular homeless person completely changed my perspective. This is Peter. I call him Uncle Peter because he's my uncle. He had a fairly normal upbringing with my parents and uh, climbed this ladder of life in, uh, in the same way as most of us do. When, when he was about 20, he got a job as a uh, manager of an ice cream parlor, and I thought that was the coolest thing in the world when I was five. I thought he'd pretty much reached the pinnacle of life right there, but <laughs> he, uh, he climbed even more dizzying heights. He ended up, by the age of about 40, uh, as, the, as a middle manager in a, in a major Australian bank. But that was where his climb up the ladder stopped, and he started going back rungs. He, he lost his job, got made redundant, down a rung. He's Relationship broke down, down a rung. He went traveling, got quite sick, down a rung. Got too sick to work, down another rung. Ended up living in a caravan, down a rung. Developed a drinking problem, down a rung. Drinking problem got worse, down a rung. He was getting quite sick and last year I invited him up to, to Queensland. His caravan was near Sydney. Uh, and I said, look, come and join us for Christmas. He eventually wrote back and, and said, look, I'm, a, I'm pretty crook, I can't get down to Sydney to catch the plane, let alone get to Queensland. And his last words to me were, take care of yourself. He died last year. The only people who went to his funeral were close family members and, uh, and the guy who managed the caravan park. And we were, as his family, shattered and, and sad that someone we knew and we were close to could fall through the cracks like that and fall off the ladder. So I made a decision at that point that I was gonna dedicate my life to making sure no more Uncle Peter's fell off the rungs. Problem was, I was kidding myself because I'm, I'm like most people, I'm a bit lazy. And I'm motivated mostly by self-interest. I like my nine to five job. I like getting paid a reasonable amount. I like to go home at the end of the day and spend time with my kids and hang out on weekends with my friends and if I can find some time, do a little bit of volunteering. So. If I thought that I could save the next Uncle Peter, I was probably a bit mistaken. The problem was I actually underestimated and didn't understand the problem of homelessness. Can I get you all to please stand up? All of you. And if we can possibly get some house lights that would help us see each other. Can I get you to sit down if you are male? Sit down please, thank you. Now sit down if you are under 25 years old. Now sit down if you are 35 or over and willing to admit it. And if you are 36 or 37 or 40 and wanna pretend you're 35, that's, that's fine for the purposes of this exercise. <laughs> this, is the, this is the face of, of homelessness in, in Western society. You can sit down now. Most homeless people are well, the, not most, but the, the median homeless person, the average homeless person is a 25 to 35 year old woman. And she's homeless because she's fleeing a domestic violence or family violence situation. And she's sleeping in her car or on a couch with friends or rough on a street or in a hotel. I used to work for a hotel, hotel company. I was reasonably high up and I sat in the boardroom one Monday morning and we were talking about how we were gonna donate some money to a a domestic violence awareness uh, charity we worked with, which was a great thing to do. But I said, look, rather than just sell some sausages and donate some money, why don't we donate some of our rooms? 
we've got all these empty rooms, hotels run at about 75% occupancy, why don't we give those spare rooms to people? We don't have to give them away, let's, let's just charge costs to, to recover costs. And the answer was, ah, oh, it's too hard. I said, well, it's not really too hard, is it? We just, we'll start a charity, we'll liaise with domestic violence, crisis accommodation referrers, we'll figure out which hotel rooms are gonna be empty, and we'll say, hey, we've got some rooms, would you like to use them? The answer was, no, nah, it's too hard. So I didn't like that answer, so I left that hotel company, and what I did was started a charity that figured out what hotel rooms were empty, <laughs> liaised with domestic violence and uh, crisis referral centres, uh, and let them have access to hotel rooms for not full price, which they were usually paying, but for a fraction of the cost just to cover costs. And it um, actually wasn't that hard. <laughs> it took me a couple of weeks to set up a, a website and a, an system to analyze room inventory, because I had a technical background, uh, and now I spend a few days, well, sorry, a few hours a week working on it. This is the first letter I received, we received, from the first person Spare Keys helped. Dear Sir Madam, I write to you with great appreciation for letting me stay at your motel. It was really nice to have a roof over my head for a few days and also a safe area. For a person with a situation like me, having a luxurious place made me feel like there is still humanity in this world. So, thank you. So, there are a lot of big visionaries in the world, plenty of them at TEDx talks and TED talks, and they dedicate their lives to making the world a more humane place. But you don't have to be necessarily a big visionary. You might be a hairdresser who has this empty salon on Wednesday mornings and you might decide to give people haircuts who need them. You might own a cafe and you might decide to encourage people to pay it forward and buy a coffee or a meal for someone who needs it. You might be an app developer, developing a better app to take better selfies of your cat. <laughs> don't do that, use your powers for good. You don't, you don't necessarily need to be a big visionary to bring some more humanity in the world. So when you leave here today, if you would like to see more humanity in the world, I would encourage you to be a little visionary. Thank you. <laughs>